Hi, I'm Nathan Zampronio, one of your Hawkesbury City Liberal Councillors. In this episode, a climactic meeting with the Valuer General, plans to secede from the Hawkesbury, and a ray of hope for people who have endured massive rate rises, but only if you act now. In my last video, I described how thousands of Hawkesbury ratepayers have been hit with big rises in their council rates. I described how 23% of our landowners, whose rates have gone up, are now paying 35% of council rates, and how that just isn't fair. I explained how the biggest part of that rise came from changes to land value, as calculated by the Valuer General. An important development has occurred recently that you need to know about. Hosted by Council, a representative from the Valuer General came to a very well attended meeting at the Windsor Function Centre on August 30th. Present were hundreds of angry ratepayers, stung by the rise in their rates and who generally had not availed themselves of the opportunity to apply for a review of their excessive land valuation before the 60-day cutoff, the period that began after everyone received their valuations earlier this year. At that meeting, the Valuer General made two concessions. The first is that Hawkesbury residents have now had the deadline extended and they can apply for a review of their land valuations until the end of September. If you live in the Hawkesbury and your rates have gone up, I strongly suggest that you apply to ask for a review of your land valuation. The detail of how to do this are at the link at the Valuer General's website, and I'll also link to it on my councillorsampronio.info website. My hope that is if enough people do this, pressure can be brought to bear. The second concession was that no landowner asking for a review in this round will have their land valuation put up. This is important because when you ask for a review of this type, there's always the risk that it might go up as well as down. And this concession makes asking for a review a no-risk proposition. However, unless you cite the right reasons, your application for a review may fail. I don't like this or I can't afford to pay because I'm on fixed income aren't likely to get much traction, even if they're true. As I see it, there are three grounds for a review, especially if you live in the Oakville, Moralia or Vineyard areas. The first is that real estate values are being distorted by adjacent development caused by the northwest growth sector. Of course, one riposte may be that even so, they are the current real estate sales values and that the value of general is simply applying their formula and that's that. However, Residents attending the meeting at Windsor were alarmed to find that only around 10 sales in the area were used to define the values for the whole suburb, which is over 1,200 properties in Oakville, Moralia and Vineyard. This sample space is simply too small to be representative. Similar properties are grouped together into statistical units called components. Nearby components, separate to the Oakville component, are cheaper, despite both containing acreage properties with similar aspects and uses. In my opinion, the Valuer General's methodology is flawed. My second concern is that the land value should be reflective of what people can do with it. This instructive video from the Valuer General acknowledges that things like whether the land is sloped or has an ocean view or has good soil or is subdividable all affect land value. Overwhelmingly, your land that's risen in value so sharply can only be put to the same use that it could have been put to a year ago. No subdivision is in prospect. The Valuation of Land Act states that land must be valued according to its highest and best permitted use. But what happens when land is bought at inflated prices on the basis of speculation that it may one day be rezoned in the future for a different purpose. The Valuer General should be prudent enough 
to mitigate against the effects of speculation in the market. The third concern is that the valuer general should acknowledge that changes as severe and as rapid as this are socially and politically intolerable. When you think about this, there's some precedent here. Look at what happened recently with the recent fire and emergency services levy. You'll recall that this was introduced with great fanfare by the state government in December 2015, only to be withdrawn in July this year, precisely because the government's modelling was flawed. When it came out that the change to tax to many property owners based on land valuations from the Valuer General were too steep, too unfair and too rapid, the whole program was put on hold. Political intervention was justified there and is here too, and for exactly the same reasons. Your Liberal councillors, including myself, have stood up for Hawkesbury residents on two fronts. To the degree that council can affect change, we will continue to push for it all the while, continuing to bring these concerns before our state colleagues as well. I'll end by answering a remark I've heard at more than one community meeting that ill feeling is bad enough amongst some to suggest that parts of the Hawkesbury should secede from the Hawkesbury and apply to join the Hillshire, or that the whole question of amalgamation between the Hawkesbury and the Hillshire be reopened. I'm not quite sure what you'd call that, following the model of Brexit. Should this be a Hawkesit or a, a Oaksit? Frankly, it's a nutty idea. Firstly, Hillshire Council never saw a development that they didn't like. And if you want the whole of the Hawkesbury to look like Rouse Hill or Kellyville, then please see your GP to have your medication changed. Secondly, you would be no better off. The Hills rating structure is not so different to our own. To join the Hillshire, where people may or may not eat their babies, would be at best a Faustian bargain and we would quickly regret it. The Hawkesbury is a special place, and it deserves to stand on its own and determine its own destiny. I regard our corner of the word as a bulwark between the encroachment of what I call Ant Hill Sydney, and it's a valuable region of the greater Sydney area that is most valuable for its amenity, open space, agriculture and heritage. If people can't afford to live on acreage allotments because of the unfairness of the rating structure, then the people on council who have either engineered or approve of this change really should accept a share of the blame if people in this area start turning their thinking towards selling up to developers. Hi again. I'm doing these video pieces in an effort to try something new and innovative in the way that your local council engages with you. I hope that you think that this kind of thing should be supported, and if you do, here's something that you can do. The first thing that you can do is subscribe. You can subscribe to this as a YouTube channel, you can subscribe to it as a video or audio podcast, and have episodes automatically delivered to the device of your choice, such as your smartphone. You can subscribe to my Councillor Zampronio Facebook page. You can subscribe to the Hawkesbury Liberal Team Facebook page. Or you can subscribe for email updates. The links to do this are either below if you're on the YouTube page or here at the Councillor Zampronio website at councillorzampronio.info. And the second thing you can do is share this, comment, sink the boot in, tell a friend, give a damn. This is your Hawkesbury. Thanks for watching.